Well, when did you say, I'm going to go into the clergy, mm -hmm. or I'm going to achieve a higher education beyond Morehouse, I'm going to make religious affairs my life? Yes. When, when did this happen? Mm -hmm. I imagine it wasn't a bolt of lightning. No, it was a, a, a gradual, I like to talk about this in terms of a tug, mm -hmm. a, a quiet and gentle, uh, persistent tug to, away from my real passion and love, political science, mm -hmm. political philosophy, and, and legal studies. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, sophomore, I'm elected to the Board of Trustees, and um, you know, again, this sense of disappointment with the kind of insular culture of Morehouse mm -hmm. made me feel there's a larger world out there, maybe this is Bishop Ford haunting me still, mm -hmm. that I wasn't connecting with. And um, I recall visiting Emory University's campus for a debate term, and I was also on the debate team. Mm -hmm. And so this oratory piece continued to evolve. and. Uh, just being impressed with this, you know, this grand university, I thought, gee, this is something I'd like to uh, experience as well as, I mean, I love the Morehouse experience, but it's a, it's a family, it's a network, a village, and yet it's not the kind of university in the, in the way that these other places are. So I uh, applied for a junior year abroad scholarship and uh, received that and went to England. So there I was and transplanted from Morehouse in Atlanta and Chicago to northern England, in which the entire county of Durham uh, was populated by 30,000 people. And uh, so it, it was this uh, almost rural with a small town and this grand old 800-year-old university there. And that, too, was extraordinary. It felt more like Morgan Park in some ways mm -hmm. because there I was uh, very much a, um, you know, in terms of racial minority, uh, even tinier numbers there in this British university setting. But an opportunity during vacations to um, both to interpret and tell, uh, 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 you know, British uh, citizens and students what was going on about what was going on back in America. They had enormous curiosity, they watched television, and you know, they'd see the anti-war movement and civil rights and the black power movement. Tell us about this, what does this mean? And, and uh, can you interpret Jimi Hendrix's uh, lyrics for us? Mm, <laughs> really? <laughs> so it was, it was sort of a, a, a strange and rewarding experience of being a kind of interpreter, almost an ambassador, I guess mm. is the best way to put it. But what, what did this have to do to you, not what, you did for them. Mm. Well, how did this affect you, being in this foreign land? People speak your same language or nearly the same language, but but this is a very different place. What did this do to you? It uh, it it certainly deepened my awareness of my own kind of inner world. I mean, I felt very isolated mm -hmm. for for much of that time, and didn't have a you know a, a, I had to create a community. Um, began to reflect more on my own mission and purpose mm -hmm. and direction in life. I don't think I would have done that at, at, at Morehouse. I was so part of the activism and the mm -hmm. movement and activities. And here now, almost it was a kind of monastic experience, this opportunity to slow down, to retreat from what the great theologian Howard Thurman mm -hmm. referred to as the traffic, the busy traffic of life. And in that context, uh, I mean, I'm now able to think about this in terms of uh, I was able to uh, communicate with uh, with God in a way, with, with really able mm -hmm. to hear a, 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 a new voice that I hadn't uh, really connected with or paid much attention to before. And it was there in England during that year that I began to experience this strong tug away from politics and law toward religion and theology. Now, I was still, and perhaps by virtue of being in a, uh, outside the United States, keenly aware of cultural differences and mm -hmm. curious about them and curious about religious difference. And so my, uh, I talk about it as a call to ministry. We're fond of doing that in, in black church culture. Um, but it, it sort of happened in the context of encountering other cultures and religious traditions as well. During the um, 
Christmas break from the uh, English school year, I traveled to Spain and Morocco. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Catholic Spain and Muslim North Africa. And, boy, I came back. I was just just haunted and fueled by with curiosity about how a belief system shapes an entire society and culture. And certainly in while well, walking the streets of Casablanca and, and, um, and Rabat in, in, in Morocco, I mean, business owners would stop what they were doing and, and, and face uh, Mecca, I later learned, and pray just kind of in the middle of the day. This is very strange and very disconcerting. And I thought, I need to understand what, what is it that motivates people to, to behave in this way, to organize their business lives around this sort of faith commitments. So, you know, back to school in, in England, and then the next, uh, at the end of the school year, uh, there was a little money left in the scholarship. I'd always be grateful to the English-speaking union for this scholarship. Uh, Ann Morehouse's Merrill Scholar, I received both those. I went to the Soviet Union. And there encountered young people who were in the Communist Party and, you know, who, you know, just very uh, hostile toward religion and religious faith. And, and, but as I listened to, you know, kind of what their faith was invested in, it was a sense of this collective humanistic possibility if we put our best foot forward together, if we share, if we don't, you know, insist upon individual and so that was very, uh, you know, my equilibrium was disturbed by the Soviet Union, as atheistic communism. So I returned to Morehouse my senior year, and I'm, I'm a real mess now mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I'm thinking about religious studies. I don't want to be a preacher. It's mm -hmm. not intellectually respectable. Right. I've got to still have to do something mm -hmm. that I can feel, you know, I'm using my head. And... Um, there were a couple of role models, a very kind of the professors of, of religion at Morehouse who were very helpful at that point. My political science uh, department chair didn't understand what I was up to. Uh, mm -hmm. They were sort of began to abandon me and thought that I was having some sort of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, a mental uh, crisis mm -hmm. because I was, you know, the A student in uh, political science and now I was not interested, or I'd, I'd come to classes with a more, uh, with a somewhat belligerent uh, agenda and mm. pressing uh, politics and, and law to answer larger questions about the meaning and purpose of human existence or the nature and destiny of, of human persons. And, you know, they didn't have much patience with that kind of uh, questioning. And so um, uh, I, I, at that point, I realized I'd, I couldn't go to law school. And uh, in the middle of my senior year, at a time, you know, when you're sending applications out uh, early in the uh, fall of the senior year, there I was, um, unaware of religious studies, seminary. I was completely foreign to me. And I uh, happened to find a catalog in a wastebasket in Morehouse College's reading room that uh, had the familiar colors, maroon and white, of Harvard and of Morehouse. And I just sort of fished it out, and this was a catalog from Harvard Divinity School. Mm. Never heard of the place. Mm. Yeah, I, I was intent on going to Harvard Law School. And I flipped through it, took it home, and there was a card, response card that I filled out, sent in, received an application, applied, was accepted. And this was incredible because, uh, you know, I, I just I had, wasn't quite sure what I was doing, but this felt like a kind of faith, a leap of faith, as the theologian Kierkegaard talks about that. So there I was, uh, off to Harvard Divinity School, but with a keen interest. It's, it's funny, I actually applied to the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences at Harvard mm. for the PhD program, as well as the Divinity School for Ministry Studies. I was accepted in both programs. Mm. And in both applications, I talked about my travels to North Africa, to Soviet Union, and this interest in comparative belief systems, mm -hmm. in interfaith and, and religious and non-religious perspectives on life. Uh, they were very interested in that, and so they wanted me to come and, and pursue those studies. But they were surprised that I said no to the, this very lucrative offer to, you know, for the Ph.D. program. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the divinity school that I wanted to pursue this ministry side. So at some level, I think I was already leaning toward a vocation that would involve service 
and communicating with the masses mm -hmm. and not simply a kind of scholarly, literary, uh, classroom-based existence. Mm 